are increasingly committed to adopting organizational and management approaches that are attentive to the principles of sustainability. And this seems to be an important added value to increase the value of events and their return in terms of tourism to encourage local development. But uh, does this really happen? We know that by integrating the sport tourism of opportunities, uh, the fields of application of this economic uh, sector are growing and allow a better understanding of how companies create jobs and participate in the animation and announcement of a place for uh, varied customers in season or out of season per day in a tourist venue or during a short, medium or long stay in different types of sedentary or mobile accommodation. The growing interest in sport tourism is linked to the associated economic impact and the attractiveness generated due to the values and the representation it conveys mainly in terms of environment, ecology, freedom or concern for well-being. This key elements lead to debates at the center of reflection on local and or national institutional communication, fair trade and relationship management. In this new context, sport tourism will therefore constitute an opportunity for the development and sustainability of the socioeconomic activities of tourist destinations with the specific characteristics and assets in relation to their heritage, gastronomic and physical offer. It's therefore considered as a producer of virtuous socioeconomic effects. However, in the light of future change, the analysis of sports tourism is complex due to its interface between uh, the strategies of business and market organization and organizer of sporting events, as to say Giovanni Di Cola. Furthermore, the integration of social and cultural uh, objectives into the strategies and marketing mix of sufflers should at the same time adapt to the issues related to the ecological safety and technological concern of customers. In, term, uh, in terms of foresight, some important uh, issues uh, seem to be able to influence the strategic actions of sport tourism uh, supplers in the future, branding and sustainable uh, destination, social and cultural responsibility, integration between forms of social environment, environmental and uh, cultural sustainability in the tourist sports offer. How and uh, to what extent uh, is this challenge redesigned at the local level? How much does it impact the socioeconomic growth of a location? How much are the organizers able to create a truly sustain sustainable offer? What are the scenarios for the near future? The, this panel has contribution that reflects on these issues and in particular on sustainability management in small scale sport tourism events, strategic leveraging of sports events, sports as brand and identity. These are all complementary and interacting um, aspects, which combining and uh, amalgamating create to the set of uh, local development opportunities uh, in a sustainable way as desired. Uh, now we have um, uh, an hour and half uh, and three presentations. I therefore propose to listen all the re reports. The speakers will have a maximum of uh, 20 minutes, and uh, I will indicate in the, cha in the chat when there are five minutes left to the end of the presentation. Uh, when we are done, I would open the discussion so that the speakers can answer the questions, and uh, we have about uh, some minutes to discuss, okay? Uh, we just have to listen to the presentation. 
Um, the first presentation uh, uh, is um, of Ricardo Melo. Needs no introduction because he is the uh, vice president of uh, Ernest, but it but uh, it's a pleasure to be able to do, to introduce it. Uh, together with uh, Silvia Diaz, they work uh, um, at the Coimbra, uh, Coimbra Education School of the Polytechnic Institute of Coimbra. Today, they present us a work entitled uh, Understanding Sustainability Management in Small Scale, scale Sport Tourism Events, the case of the Trail de Conimbrica Terras de Sico, de Sico 2019 on trail running in Portugal aimed at understanding how a small scale sports tourism event can have the potential to impact on local development, especially if organized in a sustainable way. Please, Ricardo, thanks. Thank you, Barbara, for your presentation and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, if you allow me, I will share my, my screen to, to present my uh, PowerPoint. Let me do the full screen. And I will uh, start saying that I'm very happy to be here presenting this communication in this very interesting and very well organized virtual conference. It is a shame that we cannot be uh, uh, presential in Rome, but uh, some someday we can do it, and probably we can you can organize another conference presentially. And um, thank you so much for uh, accepting our paper. I'm presenting this communication that was prepared, as you said, by me and my former master student uh, Silvia Diaz, uh, and in this case, the content is based uh, in her master thesis developed at uh, Coimbra Education School Polytechnic Institute of Coimbra. This work is based in the analysis of the 10th edition of the trail, the uh, Cunimbriga Terras de Sicó. I know it's a, a hard name uh, to be uh, speak, spoke in, in English. Um, this event was held in 2019 and aims to understand the sustainability management in small scales for tourism events. So uh, the number of sport tourism events, uh, especially small scale sport tourism events, has increased around the world and are attracting a growing number of different participants while generating a greater concern with local sustainable development. Small scale sport tourism events are defined as events in which the number of athletes often exceeds the number of spectators. These events are developed on a regular basis and as a rule, receive little media coverage. They are mostly organized using existing capacity and infrastructure and therefore do not require significant, significant costs or expenses. These events are uh, considered less invasive to the local population when compared to major sport tourism events, but they also have limited economic activity or return on investment. So despite uh, some efforts to study small scale sport tourism events, little is known about the sustainability management plans and practices developed by the organizers of these events. On the other hand, running events have also increased around the world in the last two decades. The significant increase in running tourism, however, is due mostly to the expansion of recreational rather than competitive, competitive, competitive running. In Portugal, one of the fastest growing sports in last decade is trail running, both in the number of participants and in the number of organized events. In our country, this sport is supervised by the Trail Running Association of Portugal, a member of the Portuguese Athletics Federation, which assumes trail running as a pedestrian race in nature with a minimum of paved or terraced road that do not exceed 10% of the total road and developed in several environments and terrains. And ideally, but not necessarily, 
in some your self-sufficiency and to be carried out by day or during the night in the properly marked road and in respect for sports ethics, loyalty, solidarity, and also the environment. Trail running races can also be divided in several categories, depending on the distance and altimetry, as you can see in the figure. Using the Trail de Cunimbrega Terras de Cicó 2019 as a case study, this communication aims to present the analysis of the management system that was adopted by the organizing entity to manage the, sustain the sustainability of the event and also to understand the perception of the different stakeholders that, are, that were involved about the sustainability of the event. The data were collected through a mixed methodology in February and March 2019 using a questionnaire survey applied to a sample of uh, 366 athletes participating in the event, an interview with the director of the event's organization, an interview with the sports councillor of the municipality of Condeixa Nova, a direct observation grid, and finally, informal conversations with residents and volunteers of the event. Obviously, quantitative data obtained from the questionnaire were surveyed, were processed and analyzed using SPSS uh, statistics software and qualitative data obtained from interviews and direct observation were processed through content analysis. The event was organized by Associação O Mundo da Corrida at the Terras de Cicó, that is uh, an intermunicipal territory that is located at the central region of Portugal, including six municipalities, uh, Alvaiaz, Ancião, Pombal, Condeixa Nova, Penela and Sor, and occupying an area of 1,500 square kilometers. Trail de Cunimbriga Terras de Cicó was the 10th edition of this trail running event and included four distances, um, four races and one walking event. The event occurred during two days, uh, Saturday and sa Sunday, started in uh, February tw uh, 23 at midnight with the 111K race and finished in February 24 with the 15 and uh, um, 25K. The 52K was held during Saturday 23 morning and afternoon. And 3,172 people were registered and participated in this event. To analyze the event, we use the framework in use by the Europark Spain, which con consists in analyzing the three phases of the event, event planning and design, holding the race, event conclusion and evaluation, and also the, th the three different intervenients of the event. The organizer, the administra administrator of the spaces, in this case, the municipalities, and also the participants. Each one has a role in the different phases of the event. For instance, in the phase one, the organizer must produce the technical dossier with general description, regulation, and so on, apply for permits, and advertise the event. The administrator should accompany the planning and management and, and allow the tools to, to, to manage, draw up the event calendar, authorize the event, and provide information about protected areas and useful information for <clears throat> organizers. On the other hand, participants should read and sign uh, the re regulation for athletes. During the second phase, um, organizers should comply with guidelines for holding the event, report environmental incidents, comply with the regulation. Administrators should follow the guidelines for holding the event and raise awareness about the natural and cultural values of the protector uh, natural spaces and participants should comply with uh, the regulation. Finally, during the, the third phase, organizers um, should produce a final assessment report, administrator should sign off the final assessment report and undertake restoration actions uh, to minimize the environmental impacts. 
And finally, participants should complete the satisfaction question. Um, results uh, sh um, about uh, the questionnaire. So, uh, and analyzing the 366 answers of the event participants, we can observe that they are mostly male with an age between 35 and 44 age, uh, years old, married, higher educated, employed, and with high incomes. 30% of them run the 25K, 22% the 15, 21% the ultra long distance of 111K, 17% the 52K, and 10% the walking, the walking road. In a seven uh, point scale, they evaluate the organization of the event as a good, as good or excellent, and the perception of the economic and sociocultural impacts resulting from the event are classified by most of the, uh, the respondents as positive. However, environmental impact is classified mostly as neutral. Um, from when we segment the participants by the place of living uh, and overnight stay at Terracico territory, we found that 80%, 8% of the respondents are sport residents, the majority are sport excursionists, and 25% are sport uh, tourists. When we analyze the activities developed at Terracico by respondents, we observed that the main activity uh, undertaken was uh, take lunch or dinner in the territory and other activities developed, but with less uh, expression, were visit family or friends, participate in cultural activities, shopping, and visit museums. Um, from the interviews made with president of the association and organizing the event and the the sports councillor of uh, the municipality of Condesha Nova, both stated that uh, the major strength points of the event is the, the, the own territory and the major weakness is the accommodation, the lack of accommodation. The event creates a, ter a territorial identity and promotes the most beautiful landscapes of the region. Um, however, the event don't have any green green label, but they are handling the process. The organization um, um, make a visual assessment of the trails to uh, regarding environmental assessment um, and uh, stated that some local groups of athletes run in the trails, maintaining them clean during all the year. The design of the roads also takes into account fragi fragile areas at an environmental level as well as at a population level. And many of the changes are made in order to bring an improvement to the population. As we already see the 10th uh, trail Konimriga Terrestri Kokura during February 23 and 24, nine, uh, 2019, the, the event was supported by four of the six municipalities of Terra de Sicó, Ancião, Condeixa Nova, Sor, and Penela, and also 30 local councils. During the event, 150 firemen, civil protection, and policy members supported the event, and the event also comes with a massive group of volunteers. The event included uh, four roads incorporated in existing pedestrian paths, the starting and finishing points were located in urban uh, zones as also the supply zones. The event was organized in a season without high environmental impact and the collective mob mobility was promoted especially for the 52K race where the starting point was located in a different place at Ramalhais de Cima, a small village. Uh, and the other uh, ro roads started and finished at the center of Condesha Nova Village. The organization also sent an email with environmental awareness to the athletes and promoted, 
local uh, products such as cheese and wine when they offer um, um, some brains to, to the participants of, of the event. Sorry, let's just drink some water. And I'm just concluding. <laughs> um, so, uh, concluding running events in Portugal, especially trail running events, are increasing. Uh, sustainability is also an involving area of event management. And Trail de Conimbriga Terras de Sicó was an event organized and managed in a sustain sustainable way, complying most of the sustainable best practices guidelines. The event was held during two days, stimulating tourism and local economy. And the event uh, organizers prepared the roads using urban public spaces for starting and finishing points. The roads uh, passes through existing market pedestrian roads, uh, mitigating the, the environmental impacts of creating new roads. And also the supply zones are located in urban zones with the participation of local associations and populations. However, to improve the positive environmental impact of this uh, event, we re recommend to create more envi environmental awareness actions, especially during the briefings, create some volunteer actions for the restoration and cleaning of the trails, to highlight the recycling process during the event, especially in the supply zones, and reduce the use of plastic in the supply zones using known disposable materials, and also advise participants to use their own equipment, such as cups, individual cups. Uh, finally, uh, empower the local po population about event decisions and uh, uh, especially develop a methodology to assess the impacts generated by this event. So thank you for your time and interest in our presentation, and I'm now available to clarify any of your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ricardo. It's very interesting. Uh, now I introduce uh, Lilia Lemisev and Ruth Martins that work at the Faculty of Human Kinetics of University of Lisbon and Elsa Pereira and Margarita Mascarenas that work at the School of Education and Communication at the Research Center for Tourism, Sustainability and Wellbeing at the Universidade do Algarve. Their presentation entitled Strategic Leveraging of Sports Events, Case Study of Lisbon Junior 70s Event, explores how a company can promote the strategic leverage of a small scale sport event, ensuring uh, economic viability and uh, outlining strategies to generate multiple benefits for stakeholders and the host community, as well as uh, examining the importance of the digital space for the promotion of the destination. Please, Lilia. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll just share my presentation. Uh, are you seeing it? Yes, it's yes. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm uh, Vila Lemezev, I'm talking from Lisbon, Portugal. Um, so this research uh, was made uh, as a master uh, thesis final um, uh, work. Um, at the University of Lisbon, the Faculty of Human Kinetics, and it was done um, with the collaboration, sorry, with the collaboration of Elsa Pereira, Ruth Martins, and also uh, Margarida Mascarenhas. So uh, the main um, uh, title of the of the research is the strategic leverage of sport events, and this is a case study of Lisbon uh, Junior Sevens event. Um, so, the leverage process uh, is a body of knowledge that is based um, in qualitative studies and it analyzes which are the most effective strategies, how to plan them and also how, how to explore them, 
to allow the host communities to maximize the benefits of an event. Um, so this is in a pre-event approach. Uh, and it's essential for event management as it requires a clear and precise definitions um, of benefits uh, uh, to the welcome communities uh, and guarantee, guaranteeing by this uh, the achievement and even the maximization of the uh, previously announced a positive impact. Uh, in the beginning of the century, um, uh, Lawrence Chalip was uh, an author that has a big influence uh, in this area and he presented um, some models that this research is also based on. So in 2004, he presented the economic model, then the social model of the, the leverage of sport events. Then uh, uh, later, also the environmental area was associated to the social one. And then later in 2017, the sport participation and also development. And the last vision and I think is the most um, big one and that has uh, in it uh, most of, of the areas is the triple bottom line that uh, include the people, the profit, and also the environmental, um, the environment. So um, looking to the current panorama of research in sport events and also considering the existing studies on leverage, uh, the, the evidence of application of the theoretical models of leverage in, in real context is still not enough. And in small scale sport events is even smaller. And uh, the importance of uh, studying the small scale sport events um, is that uh, they can also have a significant uh, contribution uh, to the welcoming to, to the welcoming uh, communities to the hot communities and by the other side they don't have the negative imp impacts that usually are uh, attributed to the uh, events of, of bigger uh, side um, so um, the main goal of this uh, investigation was to understand how an entity can promote the strategic uh, leverage of a sport event, ensuring by one side the economic viability and uh, by other side outlining strategies capable of generating greater and multiple benefits to the welcoming community. Um, about the specific goals was to characterize a, a small scale event, also to identify and describe strategic goals uh, and the necessary actions in the leverage process um, based on the models. Also to identify how an organizing um, event, entity leverages a small scale sport event in a specific context uh, throughout the editions and which strategies are used. Also identify and analyze emerging leverage strategies uh, in this context. And the last one, uh, identify and also analyze possible barriers and facilitators of the leverage process. So about the methodology, um, so it was a case study of a single case. It was a qualitative and also quantitative research. Uh, so uh, it was uh, under study a specific process, the leverage of uh, sport events. Um, and we try to understand how and which strategies uh, related to leverage um, are uh, beneficial. Um, it was, uh, the, the investigation was uh, held through four stages. So the first of one, we analyzed the two previous editions. Then we did a workshop with the organizing entity and also with the stockholders. Then we did a session to understand uh, which is the um, most effective and, and the most important action that could be implemented in this event. And also we observed uh, the event implementation and also the interaction between um, the different uh, actors. Um, so uh, the investigation was held between November of 2019 and uh, um, February of 2020, and the event itself occurred in February 2020. Here are, are uh, some of the techniques and methods that uh, we used uh, in this investigation. Um, passing to the presenting the event itself, it was a youth rugby tournament for boys. Um, the duration is two days of, of competition. Usually it occurs in February because it's the interruption of the English um, international schools all over the world. So they 
they can travel to Portugal and attend this event. It's for under 14, under 16, and also and under 18 ages. Um, it happens at the complex Agronomia in Lisbon, and it's from Portugal and also foreign teams. It has in total three editions, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Uh, due to the pandemic, due to 2000, uh, 2021, didn't happen. Um, about the goals of this um, of this uh, event, uh, they are mostly sport goals. It's to encourage the participation and development of youth rugby, also to provide uh, the participating clubs and teams the opportunity to further develop their skills and draw a friendly competition of players for all over the world. Also to promote rugby's traditional values and the vision of the of the event organizers is to develop and establish Lisbon Junior Sevens as the biggest and the most exciting youth rugby festival in Europe. Um, looking now at the local of the event, it's a rugby complex um, in Lisbon. Um, it has uh, three main pitches, what allowed to play three different ages at the same time, creating by that a festival uh, concept. Also, the organizers in some editions have here in the six um, a fun park and in the tree area um, a, a food street uh, area also. And also, there are some other uh, support facilities uh, all over the complex. Uh, so the organizers used uh, existing uh, complex, with, which is um, a positive fact as they don't have to invest. But by the other side, it's a limitation as they um, have a limit of expansion because uh, the complex um, has a maximum uh, capacity. Um, looking now to the event program, usually it occurs um, in four days. It starts Friday when the team arrives and do some group activities and guided tours and also training sessions. Uh, during Saturday and Sunday, it's the tournament day where they play, also have lunch um, at the tournament venue. And then sometimes they have some other activities um, parallel to, to the tournament. And in the uh, last day, Monday, uh, is the team departure. Of course, the dynamics of Portuguese teams is different from the foreign teams. Um, as the Portuguese teams only arrive on the Saturday um, and they only attend the tournament, then they don't use other services of the uh, organizing entity. Uh, looking now uh, at the number of uh, participants, um, we can see that during the, these years, uh, so from 2018 to 2019, uh, the number increased here in the total. Uh, in 2019, it was uh, about uh, 800, and then in 2020, uh, the number decreased. But um, it's, uh, it was most uh, foreign teams, so in the 2018, it was only three, in 2019 as well. And in 2020, we had nine teams uh, at the event, and they are coming from the United Arab Emirates, from England, South Africa, and also Germany. This was possible due to the uh, commercial work that the, the organizing entity uh, developed, and uh, that is their goal to have more foreign teams so the event can be more um, profitable. So uh, the number of uh, participants decreased, but the event itself uh, it was more profitable for the uh, organizers. Um, presenting now the the results. Um, about the strategic goals and also action that, that already was taken by, by the uh, organizing entity, that it's Sports Ventures, it's a, a private company that organizes uh, sports events. Uh, we uh, identify uh, some strategies in economic, social, and also the sports participation and development field. Regarding to the economic um, leverage and to the short term actions, uh, so the the organizers uh, offered uh, sporting and also non-sporting activities uh, supplementary to the event itself. 
was permitted to extend the stay. Uh, what they did was some visit to the some stadiums in Lisbon, also some to the city of Lisbon and Cascais, for example, with some games with national uh, rugby clubs, also some practices. And what we could understand that in average, the teams added 1.4 days extra to their stays so they can do these, these um, activities. For the long-term actions, um, in, uh, in, in terms of promoted destination Lisbon, the organizers um, introduced a, in the event communication, in this case, in the event logo, the Belen Tower and also the city name. Also, they promoted some panoramic photos of Lisbon and also some phrases uh, to promote uh, the beach de de destiny, for example, of Lisbon. Um, so this was an action for long term to promote the, uh, to the come back to the city of Lisbon. Looking now to the social rev leverage, the entity uh, did in 2018 a crowdfunding action to bring a Mozambique uh, team to the next edition in 2019. Unfortunately, uh, despite they promote this action, it uh, didn't happen in uh, um, 2019. Uh, looking to the leverage of participation and also sport development in collaboration with uh, a rugby federation, the, the national sevens teams uh, team uh, was present uh, at the event and also in 2018 they did a training game uh, between the games uh, of the tournament itself. Um, looking now at the strategies that were identified by the stakeholders that could be positive for this event. So we, uh, they identified 10 possible actions, but only two of them was implemented, um, unfortunately. So what was implemented? Uh, they suggested to improve the communication of event itself, creating um, publication with more content, and also to include the event and some social um, agendas um, and the creation of the Lisbon promotional kit, for example, for the foreign teams. Uh, and also promotional publication of the city. This one was easy to do because it has a low, low investment and also an easy execution. Uh, here we can uh, see some of the examples. These are some publications from the um, social media of Junior Sevens. Here they promote the city, uh, the municip municipality of Lisbon, and also here they promote uh, another event, creating a cross-event um, uh, dynamic. Then also they included the, uh, the event in the um, uh, Lisbon municip municipality uh, uh, website to promote uh, the event. Uh, looking to the um, actions that didn't happen but, but could be interesting for, for this event. Um, unfortunately, just one of the editions has a fun park, so the stakeholders suggested that a fun park and also a local market during the event could be positive to promote social interaction and also to increase uh, the event's um, audition. So integrating this kind of elements like uh, fun parks, markets, music, workshop, could be important to meet uh, also the rugby subculture and to achieve uh, economic, social and also sporting goals because it attracts a, a greater audience and promotes also the social interaction. Uh, and it can be uh, tra translated in higher expenses incurred by the inventor visitors. Uh, the barrier to this uh, strategy was the time and also the cost of the implementation. Looking to uh, other strategy that was mentioned is to include a final gala with Portuguese and foreign teams uh, in order to promote the social uh, interaction in the spirit of celebra celebration. Unfortunately, this action uh, also didn't happen, but this kind of, of actions uh, like opening and closing ceremonies also can extend uh, the stay of the visitors, induce a spirit of celebration, keeps participants uh, anchored to the event, uh, induce a higher level of expenses, and also can create a link, a symbolic link between all the, the inter interviews of this event. Um, other, other strategy was uh, to make a partnership with the Basket Bottle Project, that is a Russian project of the, of the Basketball uh, First League of Russia. Um, and the aim was to create a garbage separation bins with rugby poles, making uh, the recycle like a game. Um, and there also should be a prize system, for example, for, for those who separate the most rubbish, 
so, such as, for example, even Jersey. Uh, so this kind of, of strategies, are important because it's not enough for the event to be ecological. It's necessary to induce behavior beyond the event itself and to encourage the public, uh, the use of public transport, for example, not using disposable plastic, recycling, amongst others. So here it's also is opportunity of cross leverage and because uh, besides promote an environmental awareness, also the company can in the event itself can have a bigger exposure um, so more evidence is also um, is needed in this regard between the link the link be between environmental and also the sport events. Um, another one and the last one strategy that was identified as important one was the streaming system. So uh, the stakeholders suggested that uh, the event should have a streaming uh, uh, system with audio from referees and the commentators for a better understanding of the sport by the public, because sometimes the rugby can be difficult to understand. So it could help to facilitate understanding the sport, to reduce the negative interactions between coaches, players, referees, and public and organization. The barrier identified was that it's very, it has a very high cost uh, and it couldn't be supported by the, by the, by the organizer um, at that time. So the conclusion that we, Take, take it from, from this investigation, uh, is that we, we were able to identify the um, uh, characteristics of a, of a small scale sport event, that it has a reduced size, has a sport goal, but, but also a financial goal. Uh, it's focused on the participant. Um, also, it has a, inter a high international participation, has a reduced duration, and also uh, is a, um, a single location. Uh, and also has a reduced uh, media attention. Um, also, we um, identified that the economic um, area so, so is, is, um, is the centrality of all the strategies. So without the economic uh, part, the other areas like social and environmental and the um, uh, sports participation uh, do not have the attention that they deserve if the economic part um, is not okay. So uh, at this time, um, we continue to, to see the centrality of the economic scope. Also, we, did, we identified the opportunity for cross leverage as some of the action identified uh, can be applied to different areas. Also, the family factor was um, a determinant uh, of the rugby subculture. So making strategies as fun parks and markets that can include the families can be also an important uh, factor. Also, the digital space need more attention and also it needs to be included in this kind of models uh, as it has, um, don't have a high um, cost and it, it, it is easily done. Also, the coaches market is important because in this kind of event, they tend to spend more uh, and use more services. Uh, it also needs coalition between public and also private entities. And also the organizers, uh, organizers of this kind of event need support to promoting the destination because they um, are not specialists in uh, tourism or uh, city branding or management. So some support could help uh, the city and, and the country um, to promote uh, the city and the, the country. Some limitation that we identified um, it's that we focused up only on the supply side. Also, we, we focused in different types of leverage, so it was too general. Maybe focusing just in one could be more beneficial. Uh, also, it needed uh, or it could be done a more longitudinal investigation. Also, uh, for the part of the focus group, it could be uh, used a higher number of stakeholders to have a better perspective of the, all the events and the strategy that could be implemented. Uh, also, we could have some individual interviews that we didn't uh, do uh, as they are more specific. And also more research um, is needed in this area. So thank you very much for the attention. Uh, thanks, uh, Lilian. Mm -hmm. This case is very interesting, especially uh, with regard to the analysis about uh, management of communication and promotion. 
Now I introduce Barbara Montesi that works at the Department of Communication Sciences, Humanities and International Studies of the University of Urbino. Her presentation analyzes the role of a fencing event that made Yesi, a small town, the European capital of sport in 2014, focusing attention on the tourism appeal processes of the event brand for the purpose of promoting identity and tourism of the territory. Please, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara, for your presentation and for the perfect organization. I'm very pleased to be here, even if at home, but uh, I hope we will meet uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I tried to start my to share my uh, okay can you see no no okay And now, no. no, oh my God, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm here with the iPad, I've never done it uh, before, but... Uh, Okay. Think, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I hope that the case of Yesi can provide an interesting perspective for observing the development of territorial identity and tourism concerning the sport. In particular, the female Olympic champions of a so-called minor sport, such as painting, have represented an important brand for the tourist appeal, culminating in 2014 when Yesi became European sports capital. This important international recognition represents the most prestigious stage of a long journey that this town of 40,000 inhabitants in Marche has undertaken in the construction of its identity. Here you can see uh, one, two of the most uh, important uh, champions uh, like jo Giovanna Triglini on the, on the left and Valentina Vezzali on the right. Um, yes, in fact, uh, thanks to fencing, in particular to women's foil, could boast of being the most medalized city in the world with a loot in uh, 2012 uh, made of 22 Olympic medals. 14 gold, two silver, and six bronze. Since, uh, since 1976, Yesi has continuously brought its citizens to compete in the most exciting and prestigious com competitions in the world. And since 1984, its athletes have climbed the step of the podium, often the highest. One of the moments of greatest national and world notoriety was that link to the uh, 2004 Olympics in Athens, uh, as you can see here. National and international newspapers has presented readers uh, with cur curious news, the homes of uh, those who would compete for the gold medal, we must spoil, were a few hundred meters away. On that occasion, in fact, Giovanna Trillini and Valentina Vezzali, who would go on to prevail over her fellow citizen, would compete in the final for the gold medal. It's all about beating the girl's next door title time on August 22. In fact, it is natural the press had given 
prominence to what had become news per se. Not only were two Italians competing for the gold, but the fact that both came from a small provincial town represented a remarkable aspect in itself, which overwhelmed the competitive element in the media, as in the, this article, here are some images of uh, Giorgio Tosatti, an important uh, uh, journalist reporter. Uh, the Tiger of Yesi, the small town rules the world in, uh, in few words, was the, the title. Um, same city here uh, from the front page of Corriere della Sera, that is uh, one of the most important newspapers in, uh, in Italy. Uh, Aldo Cazzullo, another important uh, reporter, uh, writes, same city, same gym, same room in Olympic Village, same program, first girl, then son, then Beijing. 2008 about a son and motherhood. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, I will tell you uh, later. The national newspaper celebrated the strange occasion of an Olympic medal played between two fellow citizens, or rather between two inhabitants of the the same neighborhood, the two athletes. Uh, uh, here we can we can see. Uh, Naming the twins of Yesi. They are, of course, not twins. Uh, uh, there is a strong uh, rivality, but uh, there is a paper title in this way. Uh, Caro Ciampi, dear Ciampi, the gold is for you. Ciampi was uh, uh, the president of the Republic. Uh, here you can see the same uh, photo born in Yezi. Uh, so as you can see, the word Yezi was uh, uh, repeated and became notorious uh, not only in, in Italy. Although the names were those of the champions, the winner Primus Inter Pares, I can think we can, I can say so, was Yesi because uh, um, as Casarano, Taki and Venuti said, sport, an activity that is freely self-centered on the athletes, which privilege the dimension of an individual to performance, in reality as work as a collector of large, large collective ambitions. The Olympic success represents symbolic resources that work interacting symbolically with mass communication and politics. Both champions, Vezzali and Trillini, were team gold holder in the previous competition, Sydney 2000, with bronze for Trillini and gold for Vezzali uh, in individual. In that year, in a front page article by Gian Antonio Stella, the Italians had already heard about the town in market. The Oracle of Yesi, start this uh, article, told me many years ago, Miss, your little girl will win the Olympics. Um, the mother was the mother of Valentina Vezzali, and the Oracle of Yesi was Ezio Tricoli, thanks to him, uh, founder and teacher of the Yesina School of Fencing, the Olympic medals rained down on Yesi, or to be more precise, on the parish of San Francisco. Here is an article about uh, Ezio Tricoli and uh, about uh, the parish of San Francisco in a triangle of no more than 500 meters wide where the houses of Vezzali and Trillini were situated. It all started in a concentration camp in South Africa where Tricoli has been prisoned during the Second World War. An English officer, master of fencing, had told him the art. Upon returning to Yesi, Tricoli opened a club in a basement, which became one of the world benchmarks in fencing. Yesi, the fabric of talent, la fabrica del talento. Here you can see where Yesi is as a 
and you can see that it was necessary to um, explain it to all the Italians because it was not possible to take it for granted that uh, the Italians uh, can locate market currently. Um, here is uh, Giovan Battista Pergolesi, Tricoli, and uh, here uh, we can find uh, Roberto Mancini at uh, the time uh, manager of Lazio football, fo football team and now um, the coach of the national football team. Starting from Sydney and even more Athens in 2000, um, 2004, the names of the two champions, Vezzali and Trillini, provided the public narrative with one of the funding elements for territorial identity, sport, becoming over the years an important brand for the tourist attraction of the city and the entire market region. The two young women would immediately become a driving force for the city, its architectural beauties, its culture, and above all, its enogastronomic products. The result was a city identity and then a tourist image linked to the values of loyalty, excellence, talent, hard work. Success, however, although evident, was not an element emphasized, in my opinion, both for a gender issue and for the fact that the Yezi women's foil were champions of a so-called minor sport. The minority of this kind of sport, so evident in Italy compared to football, meant above all a lack of media coverage, except during the Olympics and poor earnings. As a consequence, however, the need for hard work was also exalted, characteristic that was linked with another identity, identity proudly exhibited by the town, that of being the Milan of the market due to, to the industriousness of the inhabitants. This was flanked by another, that of the royal city, linked to the name of its most illustrious citizen, the Hump. Emperor Frederick II. As Stefano Pivato wrote, they are the figures of sport champions who, starting from the beginning of the 20th century, replaced the worn out literary myth of the hero. It is necessary to underline how the construction of the city identity linked to sport was only partially elaborated to football and to male figures, albeit important as uh, Roberto Mancini, former football player and, as I say, current national team coach, chosen again in 2021 as a testimonial for the promotional campaign of Marche region uh, linked, uh, of course, with the, uh, for now, success of the national team. Because women, here is uh, mom, then Benjamin. Because uh, women, among the questions that the press ask to Vezzali and Trellini as soon as they got off the platform in Athens was immediately one strongly connected on gender, almost for the need to normalize a success that was ex exceptional. Do you want children? They want to become mother. Now it's official, wrote the Corriere della Sera with some relief. Also in the article by, uh, signed by Aldo Cazzullo, Valentina Vezzali was quoted on this decisive issue in the relationship between, between women and sport. I want to hurry up with pregnancy because in there is the World Cup in 2005, the last uh, Olympic game, she was a child, uh, it's, it's repeated. Valentina Vezzali's pregnancy, however, would have been outside the traditional canons of motherhood, as in her declaration that you can see and read here, overturning the description of the mother linked exclusively 
to the dedication of the child. As planned, I hoped for Valentina Vezzali not only managed to become a mother immediately, but she would be back on platform for 2005, fencing world championships and in time uh, with a fitness that would allow her to win back the title, arousing great admiration and controversy. However, it was a narration of motherhood sui generis as the champion say directly. Motherhood returned to the fore in 2007 when Valentina Vezzali won the world title against Margherita Trambassi, who had snatched it from her the previous year. The revenge of the mother on the blonde headlined the Corriere della Sera. The mother beat the blonde. Also because at Tom, Iesi, Pietro, two years and four months old, cheered for his mother, the champions, capable of, of taking a ruthless and cold revenge on that young, single, stubborn opponent, the mother and the blonde. This was a comparison that Vezzali certainly did not like, being seen as mother as it was as well as an athlete, was an image that she considered narrow, but she would have liked to be recognized in the media is even as blonde. But uh, is Grambassi really more beautiful than me? Was among the questions that Vezzali had asked the Chronicles one day, recalled Aldo Cazzullo, evident, evident, evidently exasperated by this representation that prevented the explicit aesthetic appreciation to a, a mother. Vezzali's image would partially change in 2009 with her participation in the TV show Dancing with a Star. TV has changed me. When I'm dancing, I feel more a woman. In this plot, Valentina Vezzali's marriage to Domenico Giuliano was narrated with a reversal of roles. Domenico Giuliano, do you become Mr. Vezzali? The, today you become Mr. Vezzali. Do you feel excited or calm? Flavio Vanetti asked the future husband. Pending on Bingi Olympics, the China Daily presented the future protagonists, including Vezzali and Trellini, both emerged from Yesi. In 2008, Valentina Vezzali's third consecutive gold medals arrived in Beijing. And with the medals earned in the team competition, she became the most medal winning Italian athlete ever. The representation again recalled classic narrative elements of femininity, but to overtone them. Here are some images. Again, uh, the contraposition between uh, Vale, Valentina, the Greek, and uh, Margherita, the Grace. Uh, if you win, you can't be beautiful, it seems. Here is uh, uh, family let you win, for, for example. Ooh. Valentina say wanted a husband and she found him. She chased the Olympic victory in Athens and she achieved it. She stepped off the podium on August uh, 2004 and said, now I want a child before the World Cup. On June 2005, Pietro was born. Four uh, months later, the Puebla won yet another World Cup. Yesterday, euphoric for the company and relieved after the risk taken the final, she was still not satisfied. I really want to see if they won't let me carry the flag in London 2012. Of course, they let. Here is the... Italian team. The request was also granted that she was the flag bearer of the tricolor, but at the Lando 2012 games, another Yasina, Elisa Di Francesca, earned the most covert medal, and Valentina Vezzali had to settle for the fourth place. Di Francesca's international affirmation started from 2010 World Cup. Elisa Di Francesca, 27 years old from Yesi, where else, say some newspaper, is the queen of the Grand Palais. 
The victory of Elisa di Francesca was another opportunity for Yesi to establish itself with the positive and winning values of sport and to resonate in the media. Although the uh, Atlanta Games in 1997 had not awarded her for the gold medal, Valentina Vizzali was chosen in 1997 by the regional market as testimonial for its promotional campaign, followed the year after by Valentino Rossi and then in 1999 and now Roberto Mancini. But even outside the institutional role, the Yesine champions of foils represented and still represent an important promotional traction. In particular, Valentina Vezzali seems to the reporters this, to speak sincer sincerely about the region of which she felt like a sort of permanent ambassador. It's a truly fantastic region, she proudly confessed to Sole 24 Ore. Moreover, in 2011, as you can see here in interview with Corriere della Sera, she underlined the deep bond with the region. She was asked how much of her strength came from the market region, uh, region and uh, she declared that uh, to have been born in the in market have given not a secondary contribution to her success. Uh, Gaia Picardi, the interviewer, uh, asked, uh, can you find a flowing market? Honestly, no, replied uh, the champion, as you can imagine. The territory of ter territorial market and especially of Yesi can, in my opinion, provide an interesting perspective in the observation of the development of territorial identities and tourism in relation to sport, because the latter, like a show and the vehicle of feelings and patients as a uh, central position in our social lives for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barbara, about these presentations. Uh, now we have listeners, listened to um, three presentations, uh, and we have um, 12 minutes uh, about the, the discussion, discussion. Is there any question for Ricardo, Lilia, and Barbara? Okay, I have I have some questions. <laughs> um, for Ricardo, I've got um, um, a curiosity. Um, why do sport residents participate so little? How important are sustainability practices in attracting sport, tourist, sport tourists? Okay. Um, Thank you, Barbara, for, for your question. Um, well, I don't know if I, I can answer the, the, the first question, uh, but uh, probably um, uh, local community are not very uh, aware of the, um, the importance of uh, sport participation since uh, there are um, a territory characterized by uh, being uh, with low population, low density, and uh, also um, with people with uh, advanced age. So probably uh, those factors can explain the low level of uh, population. Uh, and, and also uh, trail running, uh, despite being um, innovative uh, sport in, in Portugal, um, in, in these territories, can 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 be percep perceived um, in a different way, not just for for participation. And uh, the second question, uh, can you repeat, please? How important are sustainability practices in attracting sports tourists? Well, um, when we an analyze the several studies concerning the environmental and sustainable impacts, especially 
uh, those who analyze uh, sport participants or sport tourist participants in, in natural places, all of them uh, have uh, um, perception and, and uh, uh, actions uh, about the awareness and protection of the, the, the nature and the importance of the sustainability in the territories. And, and um, so um, in, in this case, they uh, perceive this kind of impact uh, of these events, this kind of events as very important and the me measures that they um, take are very important uh, to the local communities and the interaction with the local population, the, the um, um, for instance, uh, all, all of them or most of them um, have an economic impact or create economic impact in, in those territories. Um, and fortunately in this territory, um, the overnight is very low because there are a lack of accommodation. But uh, when the territories um, present a good level of accommodation, uh, generally they, they stay overnighted and they participate in, in, and contribute to the other economic, um, um, the other economical um, impacts. So I, I believe they are very aware of the importance of participating in, in, in this kind of events and this kind of um, actions. And also they are, they, they state, they, they say that are uh, available to contribute financially to philanthropic um, actions uh, in the territory. So I, I don't know if I clearly explain and answer to your question. Yes, yes, it's perfect. Thank you. Is there a, any question? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I have uh, got a curiosity also to Lilia. Uh, how, how much do supplementary activities uh, have an uh, economic impact on the event's ability to attract visitors? Um, Sorry, how much the supplementary activities? Supplementary activities yeah. have an economic impact on the They have a lot for the organizers. Yeah. Um, because when uh, the groups go to visit the stadium, go to the sightseeing of the city, go to a restaurant, um, they ask the organizer to make the booking, for example, and all the time the organizer have its own profit and then the profit for the restaurant for the club so i think uh, it's it's a very important part of um of the the staying of these rooms in the city because it increased the, the spendings of them and it's good for the city and also for the organizing identity <laughs> We didn't ma measure uh, the financial part, but uh, by experience, um, <laughs> and uh, I believe that it's very uh, important. Okay, okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and um, for Barbara, um, 70 years have uh, passed the signs uh, uh, 2004. How much uh, has that event influenced in generating an impact of sports tourism in recent years? Or is the importance uh, linked only to the fact that uh, it's the original city of Valentina Vezzali as an athlete and as a public figure? In this case, is the impact more linked to the identity of the territory for the inhabitants or also for the tourists? Thank you, Barbara. I think both. Um, my paper, uh, in fact, uh, to, today I 
present you the part uh, uh, relative uh, about uh, the identity, more uh, connected with these aspects. But uh, um, in the paper, you can read that uh, these uh, uh, gold medals uh, became uh, very, very important even for um, sport uh, all over the world. I can say if uh, in effect uh, the tourism IESI had improved uh, thanks to uh, the body and the smile of uh, Elisa Di Francesca and Valentina Vezzali and so, and so on. But uh, definitely the image of Iesi uh, has become very um, connected with uh, uh, victory and the loyalty. I think uh, it, uh, these victories uh, had uh, were important uh, even for tourism okay okay thanks um are there uh, any other question no okay um we have listened to very interesting studies but uh, on the, the theme of uh, small scale sports tourism and uh, the strategic role of sustainability as a lever of local development has fully emerged, but also the centrality of conscious networks capable of enhancing the aspects of the territory, the value of uh, events and the ability to work together for a common goal. These are all aspects that concern uh, the social responsibility and the economic uh, impact of sport tourism, and uh, which become even more central in this delicate period, uh, especially post pandemic. Now, for example, uh, the pandemic has particularly hit this uh, sector and uh, recovery is only possible if investments in the short and medium term uh, focus on these aspects. We look forward to working together on further insights in the coming years within the Hirnis network soon. I congratulate all the speakers and uh, wish you a good uh, uh, continuation of uh, your work. I thank all the participants and uh, see you at uh, the next panel that start at uh, 16.30 uh, between two minutes in uh, room one and uh, in uh, uh, room two. In uh, room one here, I see Derek uh, that uh, is the convener uh, about uh, uh, the next panel and uh, I give him the, the command. Hello, you, Derek. Hello, Barbara. How are you in, uh, in Roma? Fine, fine. And you? I'm good. I'm in uh, Berkeley, California, and it is 7.30 in the morning. I'm drinking my coffee. <laughs> it's a good coffee. Yeah. It, it is a good coffee. And I see my friend uh, Ricardo Mello there, and he has shaved his beard. He looks, he looks so young. He looks like he's about 20 years old. Yeah, <laughs> my, my little girl said the same last night when I cut the, the hair in the beard. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited. I see um, uh, Eva Schwarz, uh, Schwarzhoff, who is a, uh, one of the speakers on the panel. I see Professor Patrick Boucher. 